win. All right? Good. I'm Lisa Nash here every Friday, helping you decide where the best places are across the UK. So listen up to where we club a vision have been loafing recently. The extravagant Tall Trees Club in Yarm. And for all you eager music lovers, Seductive offer a tailor-made dance CD compilation via the internet. The Ministry Magazine dance chart. But to get us moving, this is for all the ones out there that would do anything for a Dara Lee. Helter Skelter. Helter Skelter, we have Club of Vision Video TV in the house. They're going to broadcast this show all over the country. On the count of three, one, two, three. How you doing? Not bad, that was a wicked set. I well enjoyed it. The crowd are going mad. <laughs> Were they? Absolutely mental. You play at every one, so how would you compare this one to the last one? I think, well, the quality of music's definitely get, getting better, and uh, I think the, the people out there can realise this. So um, I think they're enjoying it more. They realise now that it's not a cheesy like party like it used to be. It's serious music, serious people, but they're all having a good time still. So I think a lot of them can see the difference in the music because like people like sort of me, Hixie, Force and Styles, we really are trying to make a point with the music. We don't want no Mickey Mouse vocals, <laughs> rip-offs, it's got to be original, wrote, you know, new material, musicians like playing the keyboards and that, not just some bloke going ding ding. <laughs> so do you reckon that's the direction the music's progressing in, like sort of live? There's only so many times you can use a sample and I think it's got to the point now where the music Music we're making now hopefully will be the music that will be being sampled in five years time but you know we I think all the other samples have been done to death so it's time to move forward I've started a band called Innovate one of them's like a drummer jazz drummer and um, the pianist is like when he used to get home from from school when he was younger it like it wouldn't be let's watch Teddy the whole family would sit down and play Chopin or Beethoven <laughs> so he's a proper talented bloke do you know what I mean he's unbelievable and his name's Matt and then we've got Steve who does all the um, the engineering Stuart who's the drummer and um, all together, it's unbelievable. You're going on the house tip as well, I believe. We've done a, a house track with um, a singer called Denise Gordon. So you're moving more towards the house tip now then? Um, not really. I'm sort of, I suppose, spreading myself 50-50 across the two. It's just, um, I'm so into what I do, I could work 24 hours a day on like, sort of both musics. Um, so like, you know, what, it stops me getting bored as well. So like one week I'll do a hardcore track and then the next week I'll do a house track. And it's variety and like that sort of keeps me interested where if you're doing the same music all the time, it's going to get boring. And the good thing is as well, I pull like, because I listen to a lot of house, I can pull a bit of the ideas from the house music, put it into the hard, yeah. hardcore. And then the house people go, oh, that's not bad actually, that's quite good. And then if we put a bit of the hardcore into the house, yeah. what is definitely happening at the moment, like when I listen to Judge Jules and that, there's loads of um, house tunes with stab sounds in and that. And I think that's like hardcore two years ago. Well, not maybe a bit more than that, about four or five years ago. OK, right, let's talk about Helter Skelter because I believe that you know everything about David Prattley and how he started up. 
Yeah, I'm, I've known Dave for um, quite a few years now. We started about 1988, but before that, there's sort of there's a mad story to go with Dave. He actually started to get his money together. I was having a little chat with him um, from selling tapes, like of um, all the DJs and that. So he um, sold tapes for years and years at all the fairs and everything, and he was selling what, loads of bootlegs. I think that's more, <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> I'm not quite sure there, but. Um, he was definitely doing, you know, sort of doing his tapes and that. And um, he put one party on, and he was saying like he had a bit of a nightmare and that. And uh, he did actually lose a lot of money, but then he built himself up again. And that's what I really like about a lot of the people in the rave scene. They're not people who've had like rich mum and dads and like they've been given it to. They're people who've really worked for them, their, you know, what they've got. And how would you compare? Obviously, there's quite a few differences, but to how they first started the Helter Skelter parties to what they're like now. Uh, when I first started playing for Hell Skelter, first of all they were in a club called, um, when they actually started off it was called Castaways, and that was like um, a tiny club in between Northampton and Bedford. It could hold most probably 700 people, and all it had been in the old days was um, a massive speaker like sound system, mm. two strobes and a fog machine, and that's it, and everyone just jumping up and down, and the DJ would most probably play for like three or four hours, and now I say he's up to 7,000, and then he did his big outdoor event, and I think sort of more like 20,000 at that one, so it's uh, amazing how, how big it's going still. Would you like to do something like that? Um, <laughs> it's funny enough, when I was 15, I like started, the first thing I did was put on my own rave at school, and uh, I got banned for life from hiring the school college <laughs> block, and I had all the police come down and everything when I was 15, and everyone always oh, a nightmare, but it's good fun. <laughs> Helter Skelter, the atmosphere, the party, the music, everything is just the best in the country. What, what is the number one rave in your eyes? Helter Skelter. Is it good value for money though? Yeah. Oh, I, I wouldn't spend the money if it wasn't good value. So well, what's your favourite music and your worst music? Oh, no. My worst music, Spice Girls. Favourite music, um, Jeff Mills. Right. So what, what is your favourite hardcore tune? Uh, Feel the Dreams. How's it go? Give, it, give us a li few lyrics. Hum it. Well, you got home, man. Uh, have, I, have I just embarrassed him? Yeah, I don't know. Just goes, I'm standing here in my field of dreams. That's it. <laughs> oh, that's great. What, what music do you detest? Swing. Oh. Fucking hate it. Why? <laughs> oh, shit music. The ice balls are a pound, right? Right. You can either buy one or you can't. Look, over there, there's a massive fun fair. Have we been on them? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. The fun fair. The fun fair is wicked, most especially because it's laid on free. So, what other sort of attractions they've got here that you can sort of play about with? Hardcore. Happy hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you girls are here for the music, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. what other raves have you been to? This is my fourth rave. I've been to Dreamscape, then I went to Fusion, and then Hardcore Heaven. What one's the best? This one, most definitely. Why? Tell me why. It's packed, everyone's here, there's rides. Oh, it's wicked. <laughs> so, so, all of you friends, one yeah. from Wales, one from Scotland, one from Nottingham. So, yeah. so yeah. Where, 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 where did you meet? Yeah. We went an event before. In Dreamscape. Yeah. We went an event before. Oh, so have you all taken numbers, swapped numbers, and all phoned and yeah, said, yeah, right, me, yeah. Uh, God, oh, that's cool, isn't it? All the time down here, it's just brilliant. Yeah. Well, what, what's the score with all the white gloves as well? Everyone's got white gloves on. Quavers, aren't they? They're all cheesy quavers. <laughs> what cheese do you like? Shedder. Oh, what a question. <laughs> do anything for a dare, really. <laughs> you know, you having a good time? Yeah, yeah. Everybody keeps hugging me because I'm wearing a t shirt. I know, I know. What are you wearing that for? Is it, is it all the rage or something? It makes me feel fruity. They've got to I'm suck on there. throughout yeah. the night, aren't they? Give yeah. them such a treat. Wait, I, I yeah, suppose yeah. it saves you from sucking anything else, doesn't oh, it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've got UV pen on my face. When you go on the UV light, it shows up. There's just hordes of people here. <laughs> so, what, what, what's the favourite bit? The sanctuary or the rollers? No, uh, sanctuary, definitely. Why's that? Um, better dancing, better music. What is it? What is it in respect to the production, the atmosphere? What is so good about it? It's massive. It's massive. I know. There's a lot of people here, isn't there? It's too big. What, are you getting lost? Oh yeah, I'm well lost, me. Cheers. Hug. Oh, come on then. Hug.
stage at Helter Skelter. I'm joined by Hixie. How are you doing? I'm all right, thank you. Not too bad. You've just finished as well, haven't you? I have, yeah. And how was it? It was all right. It was all right. It was kicking, packed, so it was good. Really good laugh. What kind of set did you play? What kind of tunes? Um, started off quite trancey. I'm getting into like starting off with some slower sort of trancey stuff and then built up to a few anthems and finished off quite fast, quite hard. So it was, it was all right. <laughs> normal sort of set, really. So how would you describe your normal sort of style? I try and play a bit different to everyone else. I, some, some of the hardcore that's sort of floating around, I don't, I'm not really into, so... Like? Uh, I'm not saying <laughs> <laughs> nothing. So you're not really a cheesy kind of DJ then? <laughs> um, no, nah, not really. Like, I, I still play vocally stuff and like happy stuff, but I don't like none of this sort of cheesy, um, I don't know. Quaver. Quaver, <laughs> rip offy sort of stuff, I'm really off it. That's why, like, our scene don't get a lot of credit and that's why, because, do you know what I mean? If someone walks into a rave and they hear a, so, I don't know, something from the Spice Girls spit up, that, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh, so I'm trying to stay way clear of all that stuff. Some people saw hardcore as music of the past and of distant, and it was only last year that the media sort of jumped on it again. Now, are people appreciating the music? Some people don't give it a chance, I don't think, is it? Because it has changed. I mean, some people are still doing the obvious rip off stuff, but there's a lot of producers now that are, they've got their own vocalists, they've got, like, fortunes spent on like studio equipment and they're just spending more time on the production. It is more for like a younger audience, that's why I think it's get, it gets slagged off in the media because the people behind the media are always older and they're always like, oh no, I don't understand that. How to scale to you play tonight? How many have you played so far? Um, I've played nearly all of them I think. Um, they've been going for ages and ages. If I've got something, sort of, I always pray that I don't have no other gigs because all the jocks sort of stay around and yeah. we, we have a laugh and sort of, uh, it's good you can walk around and it's, uh, it's a good crack. There's like 50 or something that play? He has, always has a wide selection on his flies. Um, but so would you get half an hour slot or something? <laughs> Yeah, no, that's the only bad thing, right? You only get three quarters hour slot and it does Do you? No. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, it does your in. Don't mind, because it, well, I don't, I don't mind sometimes, but it's nice, I'd prefer to have like an hour and a half, two hour slot, really, because then you can play like everything. But by the time you come on, like the next DJ is behind you, like tapping his watch, going, come on, come on, and it's like, oh. But um, yeah, he's got improve your like, slot times. Give us, <laughs> give us more time. The record label Essential Platinum with Dougal. Tell us about that. We started it because we was just sort of uh, not not happy with what was going on with the music, and me and Paul have always like we've known each other for years and got on really well. And we said, right, let, let's make a label together. Started and just it just went it went really well. Everyone sort of took a shine into it, took a shine into the name. So who's on the label? What sort of stuff are you putting out? At the moment, it's just hardcore. On, on Essential Platinum, but um, we got loads of artists. We got Breeze, UFO, um, Sunset Regime, OMG. Oh, I can go on. We've just got loads of people that are all doing, all pulling their own little things in. I hear you've just been signed up with East West, haven't you? Uh, I have, yeah. Me, I put a concept together called Antisocial because I was bored with just the DJs doing the records. It was just mm. like, oh, it's another Hixie record, it's another Slipmat record. And I thought, oh, I'm going to just put myself under the name Antisocial done a record and everyone was like wow that's wicked so then I pulled two of my mates in on it and we got a vocalist as well. The first release is in October and uh, it's a track called Now You Got My Love or we'll, we'll Get Into Love, I can't remember what we've called it but um, that's in October and uh, there's going to be a video with it and everything which could be a laugh we're just going to just I don't know just have a mad one. Number four in the Bonkers series of compilations out not that long ago um, are you still going bonkers? We're doing doing number five at the moment I've just sort of uh, I'm just getting stuff together at the moment there's going to be a lot of stuff on there uh, I'm working with uh, UFO again who was used to work with Ramos Supreme uh, doing stuff obviously Antisocial has got something going on there uh, OMG which is another concept of me um, but it's just under a different name. Um, got some stuff coming over from Italy, which is quite cool. And is it going to be you, Dougal and Sharky again? Um, yeah, yeah. So then we'll see what happens. Um, back in 89 in a field in Adderbury with our first event which was illegal. Um, we started off with illegal events in 89 and 90, then we moved on to a venue in Bedfordshire 
Right. Um, then we moved up to Shropshire for a venue there. Well, every event, we never take anything for granted and we've got a really good team of people. That it could be two or three hundred people all over the country that help us and put a lot into our You've got that many people like working for you? Yeah, we've got promotion people. I and suppose people you need us. it though. There's like nearly, how many people are here? Seven and a half thousand? Yeah, seven and a half, eight thousand tonight. A hardcore now, a lot of the music um, is going pos in a positive direction and it's going to be good and we're going to have some good stuff and we've got good stuff now coming from that. We've got a really good fan base and they've stayed loyal to us and we put a lot of money and time and effort into every event. And at the moment, we've got 37,000 people on our mailing list that are members of Outer Scouter. Right, you've got so many DJs here as well. I yeah. mean, how many, how many DJs? Um, there's about 55 DJs tonight and about a dozen MCs tonight. So, uh, so, so, so come on then, what, what, what's the DJ bill? Thousands.